the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, home of the beloved Atlanta Falcons and the award-winning soccer team, the Atlanta United FC, has changed the landscape of Atlanta and the West Side community and is the latest achievement of Arthur Blank, whose name is synonymous with winning. As co-founder of Home Depot, Blank changed the landscape of the retail building industry. After leaving Home Depot in 2001, Arthur Blank purchased the Atlanta Falcons and is now one of the most influential people in the world of sports. And for his business acumen, Forbes magazine named him one of the 100 greatest living business minds. But perhaps Arthur Blank's most stellar achievement is a contribution he has made through the Arthur Blank Foundation. He has invested more than $300 million to charitable endeavors and leads giving programs for each of the six Blank family of businesses. In 2014, the foundation created the West Side Neighborhood Prosperity Fund, a $15 million long-term commitment focused on improving the community and the lives of those who live there through employment, education, and community initiatives. And in September of this year, that investment increased by $15 million. Arthur Blank is married to Angela Masuga Blank, and together they are parents of nine children and five grandchildren. Because of his philanthropic achievements, the values he espouses, and for continuing to bring together a diverse Atlanta, the Islamic Speakers Bureau of Atlanta honors Mr. Arthur Blank with the 2017 Lifetime Achievement Award. That's a bright light. Um, Bill, thank you. Um, and thank you all for the kind comments and the round of applause for Atlanta United. The, the Atlanta Falcons play tomorrow, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They're the other team. <laughs> um, I'm honored uh, to be here tonight, friends. And uh, before I begin, I want to thank uh, and congratulate all the honorees and um, Dr. Bazaar and Bishop Wright and my dear friend Sally Yates um, on your uh, honors tonight. I'm grateful um, for your leadership and for your courage and the inspiration you've provided uh, to so many at a time in our history when all three of those things are clearly needed. I also want to thank ISB for this special honor. My son Kenny uh, has been involved with the organization for about 10 years now. And um, I want to thank Kenny for your leadership and your involvement on behalf of our family. So I appreciate that so much. Thank you, Kenny. <clears throat> And I'm very grateful that our city and state have thoughtful organizations and people like this one. They foster and inspire important dialogue on issues and topics that affect each one of us. I really appreciate having my wife, Angie, here tonight, my son, Kenny, as I mentioned, my youngest daughter, Kylie, and Penny McPhee, who is the president of our Family Foundation. If you'd give them recognition, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. All four of them are champions of humanity and work uh, extremely hard on important causes that improve lives. And I am inspired by all members of my family. One correction, we have six, six grandchildren, not five. So um, nine children, um, six grandchildren, and four dogs. So uh, that's really the reason I'm busy. Um, like many of you, I've, I'm here because my grandparents on the blank and graph side, which would be my mother's side of the family, immigrated to this country in the very early 1900s in pursuit of better lives for their families. They got on ships, taking them to a new place none had ever seen, with a faith, a dream, and a determination that I can hardly imagine. The promise of opportunity was that great. They came for freedoms they didn't have, 
and opportunities that were readily available to anyone willing to work, regardless of how they looked, where they came from, or their manner of worship. I was also very fortunate to have two hardworking parents who stressed my education, modeled hard work every day, and inspired me and my brother by using our blessings to give back as much as we could. Great teachers, great mentors, friends, and others along the way in my life have re repeatedly demonstrated active citizenship and concern for humanity. These attributes have never been just a nice thing to do in any of our businesses and in life, but rather a responsibility, an opportunity, and a necessary ingredient to true, fulfilling success and opportunity. Dr. King said this in 1959, quote, make a career of humanity, commit yourself to the noble struggle for equal rights, you will make a better person of yourself, a greater nation of your country, and a finer world to live in. Dr. King's fourth and final book, written in 1967, Where Do We Go From Here, Chaos or Community, was strong, took a strong moral position for human rights, with a sense of hope and the need to combat these issues head on with a lens of community inclusiveness and not chaos. Dr. King was a model of courage and a tireless spokesperson for fairness and inclusiveness in every sense. His words in that statement almost 60 years ago are as inspiring as, and needed as much today as they were when they were spoken. In my view, they provide a simple blueprint for a life of purpose, a life of meaning. We are once again at a time in our nation's history where the notion of inclusiveness, diversity, and equality is being challenged. Hard lines are being drawn and people are again being segmented by many who, in my view, are more interested in political positioning than they are in demonstrating and championing the ideals of a great country. These bedrock principles of a free and thriving nation are under attack, and the divisive narrative that now exists threatens the future. As a father and a grandfather, that troubles me deeply. Strong voices must be heard, and leaders with the courage, means, and platforms to stand for equality and champion fairness must rise once again. We have great examples of doing that, exact, doing that exactly, th exactly the same thing here tonight. Over my lifetime, I've come to believe it is our obligation to take care of each other, not because it will benefit us or our businesses, but simply because we are human beings and it is absolutely the right thing to do. That's all the reason we should ever need to give back as much as we can, to extend ourselves in helping others solve problems that put anyone at a disadvantage. We must have personal and political courage to speak out, to align ourselves with others willing to take a stand for what is right. Doing so may not be popular or politically correct, and in fact, many, in many cases, put our own personal interest at risk in this environment. Regardless, we owe it to those who established and have fought for these rights and the ideals of America. It is our responsibility. Throughout, thank you. Thank you. Throughout my business career and doing the work of our foundation and even in my own personal life, I've seen time and again that we are at our very best, our most successful, when all voices are heard when ideas come from everywhere, and when people work together for something greater than self. This is what ultimately means and makes a life of purpose. Include everyone is a personal core value and a core value of our family of businesses. Our individual differences make our organization more valuable, and we celebrate that. Leaders are measured and held accountable 
for ensuring inclusiveness is part of our culture. I believe the same should be true in our communities. The most progress, the most progress is realized, the most peace is achieved when ideas are openly shared, respected, and implemented for the greater good. We have seen tangible examples of this through the Foundation's work on the west side of Atlanta. From the outset, it has been our obligation to listen to the citizens there, to hear their needs, to understand their challenges, not through our own filters, but from the perspective of the people who live there every day. Our obligation has been to meet their knowledge and ideas with our resources and our support. Simple people contributing whatever they can, even if it's just raising their voices, are the backbone of thriving communities. Our country needs more who are willing to stand up to any word or deed that divides us. We need more who are willing to give time and energy and resources to lift those who are disadvantaged or otherwise marginalized in their own neighborhoods. Our personal legacies will not be determined by how much we accumulate or our station in life. Rather, they will be determined by the impact we had on people and communities by the positive differences we helped make. Taking a child by the hand and helping he or she learn, helping someone develop the skills they will need to land a job and provide for themselves and their families, giving them time and energy, as my wife Angie does through big brothers and big sisters, that enables positive growth, lifting people up, not pulling them down. This is what our country needs more of. This is what all of us can and must do more of. This is what our personal legacies will be defined by. You know, simply better when genuine active interest in making life better for all exists within us. I believe Dr. King was right in posturing that making a career of humanity will write a story of success as individuals and lead to a better world for all mankind. In closing, I'm so thankful to be here tonight um, and for the ISB bestowing the special honor on myself and my family. And it is my hope that the work that you are doing in our community will continue to inspire productive dialogue, positive change, and bring people closer together in peace and love and an understanding. Thank you very much.